Hello everybody. In this tutorial we are going to be looking at creating alpha brushes and stamp texturing in ZBrush. These methods can be used to speed up the high detail texturing process in your models and offer you an alternative way to understand and create different materials. Ultimately, the aim of course is to get the detail we create in ZBrush placed on a low poly model object like this one in 3ds Max. Right, so let's get started. First of all, you will need an unwrapped low poly model. For this example, I'm just going to use a 4x4 plane with one segment in height and width. Just going to check on its UVW area like so. Yep, that's great. So I'm going to export that out as my low poly object. Now in ZBrush, go to document and press new document to get the canvas area to fill the screen like so. Now we are going to create a plane 3D, but please note that this is just going to be the area that we use to create our alpha brush on, and not our actual low poly model. We will be painting directly onto our own unwrapped low poly model later on. Okay, so we are pretty much ready at this point to create our alpha brush. This can be done many ways. One method is to create it from a black and white alpha map. So I'll go into Photoshop. This is an image of an oak tree's bark that I photographed in Starhead over the weekend. Lots of good scenery down there. So I've got plenty of resolution to use here, as this canvas is only 600 square pixels. I'll just scale that up and duplicate it onto a new layer. It's always a good habit to have a backup layer just in case. Now I'll lower the saturation to zero and bump up the contrast slightly. And voila, we have a basic alpha map. I'll just save that out. Right, so back in ZBrush, we need to make this 3D plane a polymesh 3D and subdivide it up to around 1 million points. This will give us a good amount of information to play with as we build our alpha brush. Okay, so it's worth noting that this 3D plane is the canvas area for where your brush will be created and that's it. Whatever shape you sculpt on here, will be made into a brush the same way as if you use the alpha map or any other tool to create it. So for example, we can use the alpha map we just made in Photoshop to populate shapes on this area by going to alpha, import, and selecting our alpha map. You'll now see that the alpha on the left hand side has changed its brush information to your texture. If you change the stroke type to drag rect, you can easily just click and drag this texture out onto any shape. We can also edit this further by just using the generic sculpting tools. Be aware that when you want to sculpt normally, you will want texture to be turned off alongside MRGB at the top and make sure that Z add is on. Once you've got these shapes to a stage you are happy with, you can turn them into a unique alpha brush simply by going to alpha, transfer, and by pressing grab dock. You'll now see the shapes you created on the plane appear as an alpha brush. Of course, now you'll want to test it out on your unwrapped low poly model. So I'm going to import my awesome unwrapped low poly model of a plane. Remember that this isn't your canvas anymore. This is your low poly model. So subdivide it up nice and high by all means and try sculpting onto it with your new alpha brush but do not dynamesh it or change the geometry in any other way than subdividing. Okay, so once you've dragged that brush out onto your low poly model, you'll likely notice that you have sharp edges around your brush. You can change this by going to alpha, modify, and adjusting the contrast and radial fade. You can also experiment with moving up the seamless scroller as well. Ultimately, these options will depend on your alpha brush but by adjusting them you should be able to eradicate that edgy border completely. Once you are happy with your settings, you'll of course want to save them. So to do that, go to Alpha, Transfer, and press Make Modified Alpha. So that's one way of making an alpha brush. I'm going to quickly time-lapse myself making a brush via manual sculpting, just to show you that it can be done another way. The important parts to remember is that you must create your alpha brushes on a plane that is separate to your low poly mesh and that you need to press grab dock under alpha transfer to save it. Cool, so now you have your unique alpha brush or brushes 
you can go ahead and sculpt away on your low poly mesh. In my case, this is just the unwrapped plane I exported from Max at the beginning of the video. I am now ready to move on to adding some color content to this mesh. In this video, I'm going to accomplish this using a texture stamping like process. So I'll go back into Photoshop and create another layer from my oak tree photo and play around with some of the levels until I'm happy with the look of it. This texture does not have to tile for this method, but it is still worth removing any detail that looks too obviously repeated. Now in ZBrush, I'm firstly going to fill my object with a solid color by going to color, selecting a color, and clicking fill object. I'm now going to turn Z add off and MRGB mode on. And I'm going to select a standard brush with a slightly faded circular alpha. This will help to fade out the edges of my texture. Last but not least, let's import our texture. Click on texture on the left hand side, then import and select your texture like so. You'll have to click on texture again once it's imported to select it. Now with drag reg selected as your brush stroke, you will be able to drag out your texture multiple times and position, rotate and scale it as you like. This is a form of poly paint and does not add any geometry to the model or change its shape as long as Z add mode is turned off. If you want, you can still edit the texture afterward using manual brush strokes. To do this, make sure the texture and everything other than RGB mode is turned off. Select your brush strokes on the left hand side like so and simply paint on your model as you would sculpt. The RGB intensity slider affects your strokes just like the Z intensity slider does when sculpting. To drop a color that is already on your mesh, just press C with your cursor hovered over the color you want to pick like so. Go ahead and finish the poly paint and sculpting to your model until you are happy. Now that mine is finished, I am ready to export out my diffuser normal map. To do this, I must first ensure that the texture size is right by scrolling down to the UV map and selecting the 4096 size. To export your diffuse, go to texture on the right hand side and select create new from poly paint. Your texture map should now be visible. Select clone texture and then go to texture at the top of the screen and select flip V. This will flip your texture vertically. It is important to do this for each texture if you are intending on bringing them back into 3ds Max. Then press export. You will be able to save your texture out as a Photoshop file from here. So now to export your normal, you will need to bring down your geometry to a lower subdivision. I'm going to go to level 7 or 8. Go to normal map and make sure that you have flip G selected. This will flip the green channel. Once again, this is just preparing the texture for coming back into Max, as ZBrush reads certain settings differently. Then just as with the diffuse map, clone it, flip it, and export it out as a PSD. You can now edit your textures again in Photoshop as you see fit. I would advise doing this on a different layer, and then saving them out as a PNG or target files ready to be brought into Max. I'm now going to add the textures to the allocated material slots in Max, like so. And there we have it. There is still some work that can be done to improve this. Um, I can always go back and do some more painting and sculpting on these maps. I can now, of course, also use these textures as a starting point for creating other maps, such as displacement, gloss, and specular. But that is for another time. So thanks for watching this video, and uh, feel free to post any questions. See you next time.